A Fox 10 News alert here at 5 o'clock. Flagstaff police say the remains of Kelly Petakowski have been found. She was reported missing by her husband, Daniel, on Sunday. He told police that she went for a run and swim, but never came back home. Well, Flagstaff police just held a news conference uh, to give us an update on this case. The Coconino County Sheriff's Office attorney says that Kelly's husband, Daniel, who was arrested earlier this week on an aggravated assault charge, he today pleaded guilty to second degree murder, among other charges. Fox 10's Nicole uh, Kracian has more in Flagstaff with the latest. Yeah, good evening. According to the Coconino County attorney, Daniel Padakowski also gave information during an interview that led detectives to Kelly's body, her phone, car keys, and the murder weapon. As you said, she was missing since Sunday, June 30th. After a search of the Padakowski home, though, later this week, we did find out that that search and rescue mission had turned into a recovery mission and a homicide investigation. Here's what law enforcement shared this afternoon about Daniel's charges. An agreement in which the defendant, Daniel Padachowski, pleaded guilty to second degree murder, tampering with physical evidence, concealment of a dead body, and possession of dangerous drugs. This agreement requires the defendant to serve a 16 year term in the Arizona Department of Corrections, which is the presumptive sentence for second degree murder under Arizona law. Defendant must serve every day of this sentence and is not eligible for early release of any kind. And law enforcement also thanking the larger Flagstaff community for their involvement both in the initial search efforts and for witness statements as well, calling this a tragic occurrence and just a monumental tragedy overall for Kelly's love. Phoenix police investigating the death of a woman found in a downtown Phoenix hotel. And Fox 10's Lauren Clark is live outside that hotel. She spoke with police and guests and Lauren, there are also some well-known people staying at that hotel right now. That's correct. The Panama soccer team is staying right here at the Renaissance ahead of the Copa America soccer game tomorrow. And we talked to some guests here who had no idea exactly what was happening. And police say, though, that there's no evidence that points to the fact that this death is connected to the team staying here. Outside the Renaissance Hotel off of First Street and Adams Friday, nothing appeared amiss or out of place. But hours earlier, this was the site in the early morning. Police cars, sirens, and homicide detectives responding to a shooting call. Investigators say a woman was found injured in a room by a security guard. When first responders arrived, she was pronounced dead on the scene. I'm in shock right now. <laughs> I didn't know. Tony Martinez in Phoenix covering the Copa America game had no idea what unfolded inside his hotel around 3 in the morning. His reaction mirrored those of other guests who didn't want to go on camera. They saw and heard nothing last night, instead learning about the death on the morning news after waking up. Tony says he's confused on how it could happen. Probably because the Panama national team, the soccer, they are staying here. And there were like a bunch of uh, security guys around. At this time, officers don't think there's a link between the death and the team's stay. Phoenix police are releasing few details. How the woman died, who she is, her age, what happened and why, all unknown. It's also unclear if she's from Phoenix or visiting from out of town. Adrian and his family coming into Phoenix to cheer on the Columbia soccer team just learned about what occurred right before checking in this afternoon, although it didn't change their decision to stay. It's happened, you know, like, I don't know if it's actually a hotel or if it was just a coincidence, but I feel fine. I don't think it's a problem, really. <laughs> Now, it's unclear uh, if there's any suspect or suspects in this case. We've also reached out to the hotel's corporate for a statement. We haven't heard back right now, but we'll be sure to give you any updates if we do hear back in the next few hours. Reporting live here in Phoenix, Lauren Clark, Fox 10 News. More than 150 million people across America are under a heat advisory this holiday weekend. And some in Texas, they could feel the effects of Hurricane Barrel. The current forecasts and other extreme weather events are causing concern among some about the reliability of the nation's power grid. Fox's Caroline Shively has more tonight from Washington. In a week that saw Hurricane Barrel become the earliest Category 5 storm ever recorded in a season and more than 100 million Americans suffering under heat alerts. Thank God for air conditioning. The pressure is on the U.S. power grid to deliver. We've invested billions to enhance our power grid 
expand energy shortages so that lights, air conditioning, refrigeration, internet, stay on during heat waves, storms, and other climate changes. The North American Electric Reliability Corporation puts 25 states under an elevated risk for blackouts this summer during extreme heat events. Electricity usage traditionally peaks in the summer as people flip on the AC. I'm done. I cut on some air so that I can breathe through the night, and I'm done. So how can the U.S. keep the lights on? The nuclear industry says their plants are less vulnerable to weather than other power sources. Nuclear is the one that's there all day, every day, uh, all times of the year. And as we look at some of these sources like wind and solar, we expect those to be available as conditions are uh, you know, suitable for them. And so we need kind of both to work together. In Texas, they're putting their money on natural gas, with the state planning to double its energy loan fund for gas-fueled power plants. The state has faced scrutiny ever since a fatal winter storm left 4.5 million people without power in 2021. But now it's more than just bad weather worrying officials. Bitcoin mining and data centers powering artificial intelligence are predicted to double the demand on the Texas power grid within just six years. We're talking a magnitude of 10 to 30 times of energy use for an AI data center versus a traditional one. Across the U.S., this summer's blackouts are predicted to be slightly lower than last year's and likely down from the peak in 2020.